Do your kids still get allowance? <laughs> <laughs> I am here today with Stephen Thompson, formerly Stevie Thompson. Um, he is the assistant basketball coach of Oregon State University Beavers. And the first question is, um, is at what point during your Syracuse career did you look over at Coach Beheim and say, one day I want to be the guy yelling at the kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, it, 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 didn't, it didn't happen for me at Syracuse. No? I, didn't, I didn't realize I wanted to be a coach until um, I started playing professional ball around 26 years old in Japan. I really started to become a coach on the floor. Mm. When I started playing over there, I was more than just a player. And I started, you know, coaching those guys and, 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 and directing those guys. And was it that they needed coaching? I mean, because, you know, you don't hear a lot about the Japanese Basketball yeah, Association. Yes, I, did, yeah, I mean, I, every team needs coaching, but, <laughs> but I, you know, every, every, every country and every place has a different style of basketball. And right. so uh, I guess I was trying to teach, teach them some things of the American style of ball. Mm. Uh, and I always found myself in that position. And I said, wow, this is... This feels pretty good. You know, yeah. This is something maybe I can do once I retire from playing. So how do you like living in a town where the train goes right through campus? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you know, my first day at work, I, I, I got in here, um, it, was real, it was late one night when I got here. Right. And so it, it was really dark, so I couldn't tell what, uh, you know, what was what until the next morning. Right. So when I came over and walked over here to, to, to this office, I was like, wow, this is, this is basketball <laughs> heaven, this, this facility and office and being able to come to work mm. here every day was just a special, special moment. And looking out this window here and, and seeing campus and seeing the beautiful uh, greenery and all that. But then all of a sudden I'm sitting here and wow, I see the train coming through. And I was like, wait, is that for real? And, uh, but yeah, I'm used to it now. So it's, it's, it's kind of unique to have it. Were you primarily focused on the NBA, or did you also kind of have a backup plan when you went? Well, I always, always education was always important right. uh, in, in my family. My mother uh, instilled that in us at a very young age, and my, and my two sisters as well. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that getting a college degree and opening up doors with the, my education was, was the number one thing. Right. And, uh, and of course, the second thing was to play basketball. My right. dream was to play in the NBA and have a long professional career. So those were my two main focuses when I was at Syracuse. What, what was like the major stumbling block for, you know, basically asserting yourself and your talents in the NBA? I mean, mm -hmm. what, what is it that blocks, that blocked you from, you know, getting to the that next level of, you know, like a five year contract or just kind of playing, a, you know, more a consistent basis? Uh, I, I, really, I think uh, with anybody, it's just, it's just so many spots available, right? And, and, and there's so many good players. So it's just a matter of who, you know, which particular team, what they're looking for, what their needs are, and and, and what they want. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of players go through that because once again, you're dealing with a numbers game, right? And so, so I I, I wouldn't say that oh, it was just because I didn't do this or didn't do that or I did do this or did do that that let me in or out of the NBA. So I just think it's just at that point in any business or any company, there's a certain amount of people you right. can hire and, 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 and you know, you've, you've got to pick what, uh, you can pick the people who you think will fit your needs. Where was the city that you played which was the most fun? You know, to be, I mean, first of all, during my time in the NBA, I yeah. mean, there's nothing that matches that because yeah. you're, uh, you're in the NBA. So right. it doesn't matter what where you're at or where, what team you're on. For, and during my stints in the NBA, I spent the longest period of time with the Sacramento Kings. So right. I, I always remember that as a special time and place. But in terms of outside of the NBA, I mean, it was Japan. I thought Japan was the, you know, best place I played. And, and I, a lot of that had to do with, I was, a, I was there for a longer period of time and got to really know the place, know the culture, you know. Uh, my wife and I took a, a Japanese language class mm. twice a week while we were there. Was, how did you get from Japan then to, um, you know, Cal State Los Angeles as a, as a assistant basketball coach? Uh, I was very, very fortunate. Um, um, the, the, the head coach at um, Cal State LA at the time was a, a coach named Dave Yanai. Mm -hmm. and, and I've known Coach Yanai for many, many years. He was, he was a, he's a legendary coach. He, mm -hmm. um, 
coached in the city basketball for many years at Fremont High School. Okay. I'm a product of city basketball. So you're, you're originally right. from yeah, Los, Los Angeles. Angeles, South Central Los Angeles. And when, when Coach Yanai was coaching at Cal State Dominguez Hills, which is another Division II program in mm -hmm. the same conference as Cal State LA, that, that actually was near my house. Mm -hmm. So when I would come home during the summers from Syracuse and even in my professional career, I would go up to Cal State Dominguez Hills and work out. And ah. I would see Coach and I there all the time. He would send me through some workouts. He would, uh, you know, sp pay attention to me because he knew me from city basketball from high school. So we, we already had a kind of a, a bond and a, mm. a relationship going. And so when I retired from playing, it was a job on his staff that came up and, and I wanted to get into coaching mm. and he knew that. And, I was blessed that he gave me that opportunity. Once you decided you wanted to be a coach, where did you want to be in, at the end of your career or as a, as a highlight of your career? You know, I, I think a lot of coaches go in with that type of plan. Right. And, and, and for me, uh, uh, um, I, I really don't, I don't really look at it that way. Mm -hmm. I, I believe I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a whatever position I am as, as a coach, I'm going to work my behind off <laughs> and I'm going to do the best job I possibly can. And then from the, the work that I put in, I believe that the opportunities that what, whatever opportunity is meant to present itself will present itself. The way I work, I'm, I'm more of, I want to make Oregon State the best place that uh, best program in the country. That's my job. Mm -hmm. So my focus, it, my focus is not like, okay, let me, if I do well here, boom, how do I <laughs> now springboard to yeah. something else? If I, can, if I can do my job and do it here, I'm happy. In, in, in the way I coach, you ask, instead of always telling the player whether you ask, what should you be doing? Here? Mm. What have you been taught here? What you so because they've now they've got to buy in and, and, and grasp this stuff because a coach can always tell this is this is like a this this court here is like a classroom this is a teaching as well right and so we've got to teach uh, you know we the, the, you use the word coach but we're actually teachers in right. this court you know the success translates into profit mm -hmm. you know uh, at pretty much just about every level mm -hmm. and so um, is that something that's you know, easy to deal with as a coach and trying to kind of handle the, you know, the pressure at that level? Because when you win, you know, you sell more t-shirts, the whole, Yeah, yeah I, I think from a coaching standpoint, I think coaches generally stay out of that. I think, I, you know, maybe there's other entities that may think that way, but I think from a coach's standpoint, that's, that's, that's not the concern. The concern and the focus is getting his team better and getting the, uh, uh, his or her team better and to play at the highest level, the right. maximum level that you can get that team to play. I think that's more of a concern of a coach than, than the financial end. Do your kids still get allowance? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, as, a, as, a, as a parents, you want to teach them how to be independent and how right. to take care of themselves. So my sons are at that age where they're being taught that. You don't want to give them, you know, you don't want to make it too easy for them, but they've got to understand that hey, this is at some point. This is right. You, you got to be self-sufficient. When both of your sons are here next year, yeah. what's the over/under on the number of pranks that they're going to pull on you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, do they do that anyway? Ah, uh, they do. They okay, do in so, their own way. Yeah, they so do. So like, so it, all right. It, you know, it, it, it'll be a lot. I don't know what the number is. But is it going to be a hundred, or yeah, is it going to be? Oh, it's it's like fifty. Yeah. You, in what time period? Are you talking about in a year? During or the year. During, during the, the year. year. It's going to be more than a hundred. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, between the two. So, okay, yeah, that's yeah, a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm going to thank Stephen okay. Thompson for thank a little you. bit of time today yeah. for uh, being my guest on How We Fix the Economy, and uh, uh, I really appreciate your uh, time. No problem, no problem, <laughs> no problem. That was good.